This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. This section is going to cover the string data types in some detail. So string data types hold alphanumeric data. That's numbers, letters, special keys on the keyboard. When working with strings in PLSQL, you'll usually use a varchar2, sometimes a char. Varchar2 is the variable length string, and char is a fixed length string. What that means is when you declare a size on a varchar2 and you assign it a value, you'll only take up the amount of space the value took, whereas with a char, it'll always take up the maximum size. When we declare a size in parentheses on the varchar2, we include the length. We do the same with char. With a char, you can actually leave off the parentheses with the size, and it defaults to a size of 1. In general, that's a bad practice. You want to be explicit in your sizing. Also, as a general rule, you're going to use bar char 2 over char. Strings are delimited with single quotes. So if I have that, that is a literal. That's not a string. That could be an object name. That could be a variable name. But it's not a string. When I put quotes around it, now that's a PL SQL string. Not double quotes. Double quotes are a way to create a case-sensitive object name or variable name. And no other delimiters, unless you change your delimiter symbol, can you use anything other than single quotes. And changing your delimiter is useful, but I would save that for a more advanced topic. So when we assign a value, or we assign a string to a variable, so if I had a variable that was declared as varchar2 10, and we named it vname, I would assign it using the colon equals. So colon equals the string. So we have variable name is assigned to be the value and we end our statements with a semicolon. If we had a char declaration it would be exactly the same. There's no difference, it's the way it stores the stuff. So to show the difference between varchar2 and char, let me go ahead and do a very simple if statement. Remember we talked about flow control in the last chapter. This is a very simple if. I've got a v name that's a varchar2 10 storing Lewis and a C name, char10, storing Lewis. I'm going to do a comparison. If this equals this, and looking at it, you would think, well, they do match. And Lewis equals Lewis. The comparison semantics are different, though. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this out. So we're going to say if V name is C name, they do match. We're going to say variables match. If they don't match, we're going to say they do not match. And variables do not match. It's the comparison semantics. What C name is really doing is it's putting L E W I S space 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 space. So to compare to that, we'd have to put one, two, three, four, five spaces. Now we run our test, they do match. Even though you don't see it, char is always right space padded. Another way to see the difference, we'll use uh, the built in function length. So we have C name is length, and we do the length of C name, and we're using our concatenation symbol. So we run that. C name is 10 and V name is 5. So our fixed length is always 10 and our variable length is the length of the data that we put into it. That's the important things to remember about char versus varchar. And that's generally why you want to use varchar2 over a char. For memory savings, memory perspective, or even storage when you're creating tables, you want to use up just the space that you need. Sometimes char is nice because it is space padded if you're creating a report you might go ahead and use char so that it's easier to put on the report. You know if I've got it set for 10 characters, it's always going to take up 10 characters. If you're going to embed a apostrophe inside of a string, so Lewis's name, you notice that name becomes highlighted. This is no longer shown up as a string. This is as a string. That's because of the extra single quote. This single quote is ending this string, and it thinks something else is starting over here, and then it's starting a new string here. So the way we do that, I just go ahead and add a second quote. When it hits the double quote, it says treat that as a single quote, and now that's back to a string. So in this, we covered the concatenation symbol, which is sort of a built-in function. We covered length, which is sort of a built-in function. I could explicitly convert these. Length returns a numeric, but I let it implicitly convert to a string so that I can concatenate it with another string. In general, that's a bad practice. You want it to be very explicit. So what I should do when I'm using something like length and concatenating into a string is to put two char. So to show that there's no difference between the two, I'll just go ahead and run that like this. And I did something. This was too big. C name is 10, V name is 5. So it worked. And I'll do it again just to show. So the two char you should put 
If you don't put it, it will implicitly do it. And sometimes implicitly is not what you meant. That's why being explicit is the better way to go. So PL SQL supports all the string data types supported by the database, which would include nchar and nvarchar2. I'm not going to get into those. If you want to read more about those, tahiti.oracle.com has all the Oracle documentation. Definitely a great place to go for the SQL data.